Uh, this uh, is a diagram. I just show, I'm just going to talk a little. The, uh, Nordenstrom's work, uh, Nordenstrom was a very brilliant man. And he, uh, what really got him started on all of this is he noticed as a radiologist, he was looking at lung tumors, and he would see this halo around the tumors uh, in the lung field. And he would go, well, what's that? And so poking around, doing some autopsies, well, that was precipitation of calcium outside of, uh, kind of in a perimeter away from the tumor. And what, he, what that led him on was a, a search and, a tr and an attempt to understand electrical activities in tissues. And, you know, kind of the conventional wisdom at the time he started this was that the body is a big bag of salt water and that the only way you're ever going to maintain any kind of current is in myelinated nerve cells. And so the only significant electrical activity is in the nerve cells. And in fact, even that is kind of a chemical cascade. It's not even real electricity. It's not like electricity traveling through a wire. But what he showed, and this is just one thing, is he showed that there are these ionic flows that occur in the ground matrix and the extracellular fluids, and that those ionic flows that occur induce ionic flows inside the cell. So that's one thing. And so certainly if you apply an external electrical field um, that you induce changes both inside and outside the cell. But what he also showed is that there is a tremendous amount of electricity that occurs in health and disease in the body naturally. And what he did is mapped out how this happens. And so the vessels act as uh, wires, the tissues and membranes and connective tissues act essentially to create capacitors within the body. And the body is indeed able to uh, maintain quite significant currents um, over a macro level. So he would take in these tumors that he saw, he would put a needle into the tumor and put a needle in the lung far away from the tumor and demonstrate that there was a battery effect going on, that you actually had, you know, maybe uh, close to a volt sometimes of potential there that was maintained. It didn't just dissipate the way that you would expect if you think of the body as a big bag of salt water. Uh, the other thing that causes, uh, it seems like a trivial thing, but it turns out that it causes very significant electrical activity, is that you have a, a potential difference of about 0.9 millivolts in a normal healthy cell between the inside and the outside of the cell. And that's maintained by this differential transfer of sodium and potassium ions. That's the major way. But you have these significant ion flows that are occurring through the cell membrane. So at the cellular level, you have this significant flux. And so the combination of these macro flows and currents of electricity and these micro flows just at the level of the cell membrane leads in summation to some pretty significant currents. And one of the things that you see is Carilion photography. It was mentioned earlier. So you can measure th so the this aura that you see around tissues is sort of a summation of the electromagnetic field energy and the harmonics of all of those uh, energies added together and you can actually photograph this around living tissue. And it turns out that even this is just a leaf and this is a Carilion photograph of that leaf. Um, you know, we've all heard that dead bodies continue to grow hair and nails and things like this so that even after the life force has been removed, these uh, ionic exchanges and ionic flows, the biochemistry in, in tissue continues even for a time after death. And so this is just showing that even in this seemingly completely dead leaf, there's significant ionic activity going on. And this is just simply uh, an, a Carilion photograph that is able to demonstrate that weak electrical energy. Um, I mentioned before that, you know, these, these kinds of things, these kinds of, uh, there's electrical activity that's most marked around areas of tumor, injury, ischemia, inflammation. And so the, um, uh, one of the things that uh, Be uh, Nordenstrom's work explained, which was always kind of a mystery to me, and, um, but if, you, if you've ever had a mammogram, if you've ever looked at a mammogram, if you've ever tried to read a mammogram, one of the things you're looking for if you're doing screening mammography to try and find early breast tumors is these fine microcalcifications that occur uh, that are a signal that there may be a tumor there. Now, the, at autopsy or at pathology, that calcification that you're trying to identify to, to see if there's a tumor anywhere that's too small to feel or even see, those calcifications are away from 
the tumor. They're never in the tumor. These are not tumoral calcifications. These are calcifications that occur outside, and they occur around a lot of tumors. And that's simply because of precipitation of uh, calcium ions in the tissues at a distance from the tumor. Even in a small introductal tumor that's only you know, a few hundred cells large, there's enough current generated to actually cause a precipitation of calcium. And so, um, so Nordenstrom's work is really interesting. I have in the handout there's a reference to his book, which is uh, simply called Biological Closed Electrical Circuits. Uh, get it in the library and look at it before you buy it, because I've gone through it numerous times, and it's really dense reading. And uh, you know, I think the idea, if you take away simply the idea that there is significant and important electrical activity in living tissues outside of the nervous system, that's probably the most important thing. So 